touch with customs and uh, clear that this is a counterfeit part and destroy the legal part. Okay, in India, what is your plan to fight with this counterfeit part that we have in Indian market, especially coming in from China and all? What is your plan to fight with this? The, the strategy is uh, to have a strong set of brands and a loyal distribution base. You know, that, that, that is the backbone. And then, uh, uh, we're almost completely sure that we only have our own product in the, in the market. And then let's not forget uh, there's not only counterfeit product, but there is also low quality or suspicious service or, or for maintenance, you know, which is at least as much important. So we need to be able to be attractive for the whole value chain so that uh, the counterfeit product doesn't really have an opportunity. So do you have some kind of training program for the mechanics? So that they are aware how to fix those uh, products? Yeah, it, is, it is our global principle that we uh, reach out to as many uh, workshop personnel, mechanics as possible. Here in India, we do uh, factory visits you know, to instill uh, the, the trust you know, in our broader customer base, you know, what, 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 what our products look like, what quality means. You know. uh, we do trainings, we do trainings on, on, on trade fairs, or we do medical camps, uh, which comes with uh, the technical training. So, getting the technical expertise from an engineering center plant level uh, to the workshop level is a, is a, is a global issue uh, uh, that uh, makes sure that uh, suspicious product is uh, recognized, you know, and, and the true quality level uh, is appreciated. If I may step in. At this show we are launching our web expert online portal. Give us the possibility to communicate directly with the auction. So product itself always flows via distributors and retailers, wholesalers down to the workshop. But the technical discussion, uh, we wanna we wanna get closer to the workshop and have this one-on-one -on -one discussion about quality, what it takes. And how do, how do you understand the differences? So, so loyalty will go beyond coupons in the box. You know? Loyalty will happen by fitting instructions available online. And for the technologies we see coming you know, the, the, in, in India, you know, working with fitting instructions, working with access to special tools you know, will be imminent. Schaffler India is now taking another step to fight counterfeit. They have launched an online portal where the customer can directly buy and discuss about the quality of the product. Thank you so much for talking to us. We wish you all the very best. Okay, appreciate it. Well, Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Check one two one two check. First, let me get some background. So sort of that's sort of my, you know, one of the main themes is to kind of build the synergies among the three. So you have four the plants, right? Face now. to the customer, you know, until that point of time, we were three different companies going to customers as three different companies. Hmm. Now we go to the customer as Schaefer and provide so the complete solutions. So now you have uh, merged all three companies. Into legally, we have not. Hmm. So legally, they remain three different companies, but we. Uh, operate under the Schaeffler name and when uh, you know uh, let's say key account manager goes to for okay, example so Maruti he represents all three companies. Okay. All three bears 100% owned uh, FAG is not. FAG is 51% uh, owned and 49% is actually listed. It's listed on BSC as well as okay. NSC. Uh, Luke and Ina are 100% owned. Okay, okay. So three subsidiaries. Three subsidiaries. FAG is 50% uh, owned and uh, Luke and Ina are oh. But subsidiary only? Yeah. Two years ago you came? Uh, two and a half years ago, yeah. August 2005. Should we start? Aapko dekh kar ke dar lag jata hai mujhe. Nahi nahi. Aap log bolne nahi dete, kuch bolne hi nahi doge inko. It's been two years. Two years sir. Uh, it's been two years for you to be in Schaffler. You have tried bringing in all the three subsidiaries at one platform. What is your plan? How do you want to take Schaffler in India going forward? 
Uh, well, we have got a pretty strong presence in India. FAG has been around the country for more than 50 years. And uh, both Ina and Look also have been operating in the country for more than 15 years. So we got a pretty strong presence in India. And also through the manufacturing and engineering footprint, uh, you know, our, our, our acceptance at the, at the marketplace and with the customers is pretty strong. The thought of bringing the Schaeffler umbrella on top is to uh, represent certain value and certain expectations that the customers will have from the three brands together. The synergies that we bring through providing the complete product portfolio to our customers is something that uh, uh, you know is of great uh, value to our, our customers. Um, I have been working uh, closely with the uh, with our team on reorganizing our team under industrial and automotive business divisions now, so that we can really go to the customers as one uh, face to the customer and offer the complete solutions. And that's something a journey we started two years ago, and we continue to work on it. What is the next step for Schaffler now? Are you going to expand your product category also here in India? Well, that's something that we continue to do almost every day. Uh, you know, our growth uh, has been uh, pretty well. Uh, last year, we grew 17% uh, in India, with our turnover being uh, uh, in excess of 3,000 crores. Uh, we are launching new product segments this year as we speak. So, for example, in automotive, uh, we have done automotive uh, uh, alternator uh, uh, pulleys uh, last year. We are doing chain drive systems, uh, front uh, engine accessory drive systems. So we continue to expand the product lines we are into and providing increased, increasing solutions to our customers. Uh, with the Make in India program, the government is uh, offering a lot of you know easy access to things in India and encouraging manufacturing. How do you see uh, this helping you and what kind of uh, capex you have for further investing in India? Because we see the, the, the growth is going to come up in the fuel because the MSCB has bought it out. You see passenger cars will also come up. Two-wheeler is already doing well. Uh, being a German multinational company, I mean, we are excited about the uh, thought that the government has of, uh, of increasing the manufacturing share of the total uh, GDP in India. Um, and uh, we have been investing uh, quite well. Uh, you know, this year we have plans of investing 180 crores into both our uh, manufacturing footprint as well as engineering capabilities in India. And that's the sort of level of investments will continue, at least for the next five to ten years. I mean, you know, foreseeable future is something that we will continue to do that. Increasing localization, increasing the uh, uh, engineering competency in the in the country is something that we'll continue to work upon. How do you want to leverage the competence of India, that is low cost, manpower and other thing, for your global advantage? Yeah, I just want to caution again one thing, you know, the low cost manpower is not necessarily the only competence no, India no, provides. No, but yeah, <laughs> you see the uh, technocrats and all, you Correct. are quite good engineers here in India. Mm. Now. So, uh, we have beginning, at, at the start we have identified two core sectors, uh, agricultural tractors and motorcycles. So these two sectors we have identified as uh, something that India will be providing the solutions for the whole Schaeffler uh, environment globally. So small motorcycles below 150cc and agricultural tractors probably below 100 uh, horsepower. So what would be the parts that you will manufacture here for global needs? And the, the thought there is not just of manufacturing but also developing the solutions. So we provide the technical development, engineering development for our customers, work with them and, and develop these systems and then manufacture. So this includes not just the manufacturing but also the engineering competency development. So do we see India developing as the back office for R&D for Schaffler? I would rather call it uh, India will be uh, uh, one of the partner of the global technology network of Schaeffler. Um, which means, uh, you know, these two sectors will be primarily located in India, not just to serve India, but global needs. Whereas some other technologies, for example, e-mobility, let's face it. You know, at this point of time, India is in, in infancy. So we probably will be getting those solutions out of Germany. So, you know, we are part of the net, uh, technology network where certain technologies will be developed in India for the global applications, whereas other technologies we might be dependent on other technology uh, centers around the globe. We see that uh, electric vehicle, the government of India has earmarks of investment for electric vehicles. But we see hardly, you know, uh, companies getting into manufacturing product for EVs. Do we see Schaeffler taking the first step in this direction? Well, we if yes, what would we do? <laughs> we are a technology solution provider. Uh, we have solutions on uh, e-mobility. 
uh, under the themes of, uh, uh, for example, we're working on uh, integrating electric motor into the individual wheels. So each one of the four wheels, for example, can be independently run by an electric motor integrated into the wheels. So we have development uh, projects with some of the global OEMs uh, in, in those direction. As far as India is concerned, yes, I mean, we have made small beginning through, you know, Mahindra Reva is being the only electric car being produced in the country. Um, we are part of the government's uh, mission on e-mobility. We are participating in uh, development of the technology in India and laying out a roadmap that, that government has ambitious plan of converting uh, both the technology side as well as the infrastructure side to provide solutions towards those. We see that electrical and electronic parts are increasing in vehicle in India. Previously we did not have even AC as a standard fitment. Now today we have these all are mandatory. We have, how do you see it changing shape in India? The, uh, the content change, the technological change uh, is an evolving thing. Um, I think some of the trends happening in terms of you know engines becoming smaller, right? I mean, uh, density of uh, power downsizing, for example, the reliability requirement, the emission uh, control systems into the, into the into the into the powertrain is requiring many of these uh, uh, you know innovations to start coming into the engines, and this is an eventuality which will continue to happen. We have strong association with uh, our technology uh, you know partners, uh, uh, Continental, for example where you know, we have 46% uh, uh, you know, strategic share uh, of Continental. And they are particularly strong uh, in, in, in providing electronic solutions uh, in powertrain. So we're working very closely with them on uh, co-developing such solutions and providing it to our customers. In India, we have seen a new technology, AMT, because we see the congestion, traffic congestion is very huge in India. So there is great scope for this product. And we have only one uh, supplier right now. So there is a great opportunity. Do you think you will bring such technology? Well, uh, probably a year ago, nobody was talking about this topic, but now it's becoming a very, very important topic. Um, so we have uh, provided uh, various uh, uh, possible solutions to our uh, customers. Uh, we have what we call an ECM or electronic clutch uh, module or management, which is what we demonstrated on this concept car, wherein just the clutch pedal is removed and then the uh, transmission can be changed or the gears can be changed without application of clutch. Then beyond that, we have the AMT solution, where of course, you know, now everyone is familiar with the AMT solution. And then going further on that, you can have DCT, you, have you can have CVT. AMT like solution. The other solution, which one is cheaper and which one you think will be suitable for India? Um, it seems like AMT is getting well accepted. Uh, customers are uh, well accepting the product or the first launch which has happened and now there are almost every OEM is working on it. So yeah, we'll be very happy and glad uh, to uh, work on that solution and offer that solution. And apart from that, again, like I said, you know, we have all the other automation solutions also on offer. So what are the solution we can expect in the next few months, if at least? ECM is something, again, electronic clutch module is something which is already demonstrated as something we can do right away. AMT, we have uh, certainly started working on it. Uh, DCTs, uh, CVTs, as well as uh, complete automatic transmissions are automation solutions which uh, we are working uh, with uh, local as well as uh, global OEMs on, uh, on uh, giving them the solutions. Our Schaffler AMT, a car on Indian road, when we will see that? It depends, I guess, on our customers, you know, what the pull is. And uh, uh, we have demonstrated that technology to our customers. Uh, yes, uh, our competitor has a lead on it. Uh, but in terms of how the market is, uh, is growing and developing, we'll uh, certainly be happy to participate in that growth. By next year, we'll have some at least. I know you want a, a specific date and uh, you know as soon as uh, you know we have a, a, a production intent from uh, one of our customers we'll be happy to launch it safety you know uh, uh, components are a major concern in india you see cars still do not have you know airbags abs how do you see do you think that the government should make it mandatory or the car manufacturer should take the first step and start giving you know at least airbags and abs in all the cars well, my personal opinion is, you know, safety is a little bit more than just the technology you have in a car. The, the, if you really want to achieve comprehensive safety environment, then you need to work, obviously, in, you know, how well the cars are engineered, but beyond that, what kind of traffic environment you have, what kind of infrastructure are you creating? That's how you will be able to achieve the holistic benefit of the, uh, of the safety. 
I see some recent moves by the government. You know, they're working on making airbags, for example, or the ABS, uh, for example, mandatory in uh, future cars. There are end cap requirements being mandated, wherein the frontal crash uh, is uh, is being mandated as a requirement. So I think it's a great news for. Uh, so do you think the the speed uh, currently OEMs were you know uh, taking crash test test uh, for the mass cars at around 40 kilometer speed and uh, do you think it should be increased further? Uh, to be honest, I'm not a necessarily an expert uh, in uh, in uh, in the frontal uh, crash requirements from, uh, but from my knowledge, I'm.